Hello guys! Well, it's been over two years since we last did a vlog and wow, what a crazy two years it's been. I don't think there's any one of our viewers who hasn't experienced really challenging times. Thank you so much for those of you who have expressed that they've missed us and have been concerned for us. We've been absolutely fine. We've just been so busy. So much has changed for us as I'm sure it has for you. So we're just here to kind of give you a little update really of where we went. Two years. Crikey. How do you sum up two years in a few moments? I finished my degree last um, July. I've been training to be an outdoor instructor for an outdoor activity centre called Mendip and been doing their media so I've been doing skiing, canoeing, archery, air rifle, crate stacking, kayaking, so much stuff and doing all their in in-house stuff and for their film and media it. and it's been a dream you honestly know. he's come home every day like he's been to summer camp like he's just having the, the best time well two years ago i got offered a full-time job teaching learners on the autism spectrum and i was teaching them art and study skills and it was amazing it was having the best time and then all this lockdown madness came ended up becoming an online teacher if there's any teachers watching, you're gonna know how stressful it's been. It's been really tough. I spent a year full-time at university doing a PGCE, which is a degree level teaching qualification. It was so hard. Even Ellie found it hard and she's very and academic. I I'm... nearly dropped out. I came so close more than once and I'm so glad it's over. We're just gonna kind of share with you some of our highlights over the next couple of weeks. We're traveling through Wales. We've kind of got a rough idea. We haven't booked anywhere. We're just gonna go with the flow, see what happens. And we're currently at Port Einan, a really nice campsite and we've got an absolutely stunning view. But we just thought it'd be really nice to share with you kind of where we've been. Here is the start of a really cool two weeks road trip, Welsh style. Hey, I was hoping you would stay, but I've always known that you would go and find your own way. And the sun would always shine when we sat there, you and I. River's gonna cry when you're gone. gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. We're just gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. We're just gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. We're just gonna cry when you are. We're just gonna cry when you are. We're just gonna cry when you're gone. Good morning from the Gower. We are heading onto the road now. So we're gonna head over to Pembrokeshire, I think. We'll see where the road takes us. But before we head to Pembrokeshire, we are just gonna head down the road to the Gower Gin Company because next weekend we are meeting up with a friend and it's her birthday. So what better way than a nice bottle of Gower Gin? Right, let's get on the road. We launched our first gin in the end of September 2017 and so we now produce our range of six gins and we produce over 50 gins for other people right across the UK. Yeah, so we produce literally tens of thousands of bottles from this space uh, every year. Wow. We set about designing the gin. We wanted to make gins uh, that were really evocative of the Gower. 
So all our gins contain something wild foraged from the Gap Peninsula. Um, so we take it in turns to go out foraging for all the various things that we, we put into our gins. So like I said, I've got a friend who is very much a gin connoisseur. Um, every time I go to her house, she's got a new gin that I must try. Absolutely. And she usually does pick it up on, on one of her little journeys somewhere. So she would have loved to have been here right now. <laughs> we'll go for your gold medal winner then. There we go. And I, uh, her husband likes a bit of poetry as well, so he might know a bit about this <laughs> Dylan Thomas. Excellent. You never know. Thank you so much for You're taking welcome. me through them. You're welcome. Um, a bit early in the day for me to be trying them, Probably. but I, I'm sure I'll get opportunity <laughs> to try this one um, later when on. I hand it over later Perfect. on. Yeah, so I'll take that one, thank okay, you. Okay, no worries at all. So we found ourselves a little campsite in Pembrokeshire. It's not far from the Blue Lagoon where apparently they do like some sort of Red Bull diving Anyway, it's like proper back to basics um, campsite, which is quite nice. They've just got port loos sort of rustic looking showers, little place with some water where you can do the washing up, but amazing view. And um, it's pretty quiet actually for the summer holiday. It's not bad going. Um, so we're just awaiting the arrival of Scott's friend, Josh, who I haven't met before, but Scott is chatting to him all the time on the messenger. They literally, they're like boys and they just talk about gear, camping gear, constantly um, so hopefully tonight they won't just talk about camping gear and um, it might be something a bit more interesting we will see so how do you guys know each other it started off actually you know I was looking at getting into wild camping and I came across Scott's channel at the time um, and watched a few of his YouTube videos and that actually got me into wild camping I actually found Scott on Facebook in a group wildcamping.uk that's the um, one yeah. and yeah then we got you know we got um speaking a lot more this guy has so much kit it is unbelievable he, i know i did say he's a bad influence because like we you, you we two... spend most of our time just like uh, chatting on messenger with kit like i'm just like have you seen this and and josh is like yeah i've got three of them already <laughs> <laughs> Good morning from a glorious Pembrokeshire. We are heading down to the Blue Lagoon, you know, the famous um, diving pool. Hopefully the crowds aren't too busy at the moment because it's about 10 o'clock. So fingers crossed, it should be a little bit quiet. lagoon was absolutely beautiful the water's like turquoise out there and it's so clear you can see right to the bottom all the rocks and everything really tempted to stay here another night because it's a beautiful spot it's literally 10 minute walk to the blue lagoon and the view is amazing but we're going to try and get some miles in north apparently this campsite's only been here for two and a half weeks brand new when we pulled in, I saw the port and I was like, oh no, I'm like terrified of port because they're usually gross, but these were actually very clean 
And the showers this morning, gas powered showers, really nice. Got that whole outdoor kind of feeling. I was watching the little baby cows while I was having my shower. So yeah, really nice. Very much recommended. You're probably wondering what we're doing, just going to campsite after campsite. We don't usually do that. We usually park somewhere wild, but honestly, since the whole COVID thing, I do feel a bit anxious about wild parking. There are so many kind of things on social media saying, you know, people go home and I don't know, I haven't seen any hostility. I haven't experienced any hostility, but I can't help but feel a little bit nervous. So I think given the current climate, kind of using campsites as much as possible is kind of the sensible thing to do. just up on top of the, the cliff and it was so windy last night the van was blowing all night long so we didn't have the best night's sleep and also Florence has had a little bit of a problem with the um, the engine so yesterday it cut out a couple of times didn't know what was up with it I think I've sorted the problem out now so that was that was leaving us a little bit anxious last night so we did do too much filming Plus it was so windy. So today I've been out early looking at the engine, fixing a few problems and fingers crossed it should be okay. I think we're going to head inland um, to Snowdonia and that's when we meet up with our friends. So fingers crossed Florence will not give us any problems today but with these old vans you just don't know. Right I'm going to get back and meet up with Ellie and then I think we're going to get on the road. So where are we now? We are at A&E in Porth Maddock. Why? The bonnet was open because I was fixing something on the engine and as I come round the side, the corner of the bonnet just went and basically tore me a nice um, split in my forehead. So luckily there is a nurse on board. Because it's Wales and because of COVID, I have to go in on my own and try and explain to them why I have a pair of knickers and a sanitary towel on my head. I will see you in a mo with a report on what is going on. It really has just been one of those days. So we got up this morning, we go to start the van and not for the first time this trip, the van would not start. And it just got to the point where we were like, do you know what, we need to just get home because this is starting to stress us out. So we were actually heading home we got just outside of Blenheim Fastiniog 
Scott pulls over, has one of his little brain waves. Too much air, it's coming in through the LPG because the seals are warm. Because as soon as we take the LPG away, it seems to be running on fuel. Really, really sweet. But anyway, we're thinking, we'll stay, we'll stay. Maybe we're all right, who knows? And Scott was literally just walking out to close the bonnet, feeling really pleased with himself because actually we can stay. I just hear thump. So what did they do? They super glued me back together. So they used strands of my hair to seal it up. Reconstruction time. I don't know why he would want to do this. Because everybody wants to know. So I came out like this and I went like that. Boom! Yeah, but you Brains and everything. I said I spit my head open. You were like, yeah, all right, give me five minutes. And then about 15 minutes later, she came round and helped me. Not really, she came straight away. And she was like, yeah, you're gonna need stitches or okay. super glue or a panty pad and a pair of knickers. What a beautiful morning. Florence is parked just down there. And I've got lovely views of the Snowdonia mountain range. The sun is just peeking and it's beautiful. It's grummy. many yet huh I haven't got very many yet because Can I see you've eaten most of them oh wow look how many you've got <laughs> that was a full punnet earlier <laughs> first thing Scott said to the lady when we come in is can we eat them she was like it's not encouraged in Somerset this is what we do eat as many as you want even if they're not ready yet. Pizza time. We are no longer in Wales. We are um, back in England. So for the longest time, I have wanted to go and visit Chester. But trying to get this guy away from the mountains has not always been easy. But somehow I have persuaded him. So we're having a very, very lazy day today. And we've somehow got a whole field to ourselves at this campsite. So we've just had our pizza and we are gonna enjoy having our TV on this lovely rainy evening and we're gonna watch the Grand Tour lockdown. So that should be good. And then tomorrow, I um, don't know if we're gonna walk yet, we might cycle, but we're gonna go along the canal into Chester and have a look around there. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so we'll see you in the morning.
so that brings us to the end of our two weeks road trip around Wales. So we started off in the south and we've ended up in the north. We're right by the M6 so we figure we'll just head down south and make our way home. Thank you so much for catching up with us and um, sharing in some of our highlights of the trip. And as for the future of Explorer Buddies, we just don't know. Yeah, that's the thing. We can't, everyone keeps asking us more vlogs, more videos, more of this. And we just don't know. We can't give any guarantees. All we know is that we, we both are in full-time employment now. We have very limited holidays. So who knows what the future holds? Yeah, so this is goodbye for now. And um, yeah, we hope you all get opportunities to get out and have some adventures of your own because it has been such a tough couple of years and we really hope that we all get to experience some kind of normality moving forward and, and we can put the last couple of years behind us. If you don't follow us on Instagram, then head over to our Instagram page because we keep that pretty much updated more than we do YouTube because we're always posting pictures of our mini travels. So if you want to find out what we're doing in the future because you haven't seen one of our films, then head over to Instagram. See you later. Bye. See you on the road.